Welcome. Today we're going to learn how to use slope, a point, and part of another point to find the missing value of the point. Now that sounds a little confusing at the moment, but before we go into it, I want to make sure you know how to solve a ratio. What I mean by a ratio is simply this. If you have two fractions where one of the parts of the fraction is unknown, like for instance, let's say we have 6 over some unknown value x equals 3 over 7. Some of you could solve that intuitively, going, oh, 3 is half of 6, 7 must be half of x, x must be 14. But the way I want you to realize how to solve the actual equation is we do what's called cross multiply, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by both denominators. In other words, I'm going to multiply by a 7 and an x to both sides of the equation. And if it helps, put it over 1 to make sure you realize that we're doing them as like fractions. What that's going to do is it's going to eliminate all the fractions. The x's cancel on the left side, leaving 7 times 6, which would be 42, equals, on the right side, the 7's cancel, eliminating that fraction, and we have 3 times x. And now we just have a simple one-step equation where we divide by 3, and we find out that x is that 14 that I said. Okay, it's called cross multiplying. 3 times x is equal to 6 times 7. Now, don't confuse that with cross simplifying when it comes to um, multiplying fractions together. But let's do an example of what I'm talking about in um, the homework today. What they're going to do is they're going to say, all right, let's say you have two points. You have the point 1, 2. And then you have another point that has an x value of zero, 0 and some other value we don't know, some y value we don't know. We want to find this y value. Right now we can't do it. But let's say we know the slope of the line that goes through those two points. Let's say that slope, and slope I'm going to write as m, because m refers to slope in the equation y equals mx plus b, right? So let's say the slope is a 5. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slope formula. I'm going to use the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals m, or the slope. Okay, so do I know my second y value? Well, I don't. It's x. So I'm going to go x minus my first y value, which is 2. So I'm doing the y2 minus the y1 over the x2 minus the x1. Well, the x2 is 0 minus 1, and that equals my slope, which is given, equals 5. So now I'm going to start to reduce, first of all. In other words, if this hadn't been a 0, I'd actually, let's do that minus. So I'd write x minus 2 over negative 1 equals, and I'm going to write this as a fraction, 5 over 1. That's the same as 5. But what now I'm going to do is I'm going to do that cross multiply. I'm going to do the negative 1 times the 5 and get a negative 5 equals, and then I'm going to multiply the x minus 2 times 1. So 1 times, in parentheses, x minus 2. And the only reason I did this is oftentimes this won't be a 1, and you'll have to distribute it in. But since it's a 1, it doesn't change. So I have negative 5 equals 1 times x is x, 1 times negative 2 is minus 2. Now I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I find out my x value is negative 3. Oops, you can't see that. There you go. And I could easily check that by plugging that x, val that x value up here. Um, by the way, I probably shouldn't have used x. I probably should have used y, because that's a y value, not an x value. I don't want to confuse you. Yeah, that probably confused you. That's a y, like your y2. y2. Variable's a variable. It doesn't really matter what variable we use, right? I just don't want you to confuse it with an x value. It's I just use the variable x to represent the unknown. But my y2 value is negative 3. Negative 3. What's negative 3 minus 2? Negative 3 minus 2. It's negative 5 over what's 0 minus 1? Negative 1 over negative 1. And negative 5 over negative 1 is a slope of 5.
Let's do another one. This time, let's make the x value an unknown. Okay, and then maybe I'll use a completely different variable so you, we don't confuse it with x's and y's. So let's say I uh, go through the point negative 3, negative 5, and the point some x value that I don't know, and negative 10. So I use the variable u. Let's also say my slope is negative 5 halves. Like I said, oftentimes the slope won't be an integer, it's going to be a fraction. Well, I'm going to do my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals my slope. Okay, what's my second y value? Negative 10 minus my first y value. Now be very, very careful here. I'm minusing a negative 5, so watch your minus signs, over x2, my second x value, which is 0, minus my first x value, which is negative 3. Now that equals my slope. And again, what was my slope? What did they tell us our slope was? Negative 5 halves. Now let's simplify. Okay. In other words, negative 10 minus a minus or plus 5 will be negative 5 over u minus a minus means it's going to be u plus 3 equals a negative 5 over 2. Now, make sure you realize that negative in front of the 5 halves, I either attach it to the 5 or the 2. Don't do it to both. So I'm going to put it with the 5, and I'm going to now do my cross multiply. I'm going to multiply those two together. So I'm going to have a negative 5 parentheses u plus 3 equals, and I'm going to multiply those two together, a negative 5 times 2. Let's distribute in. So I'm going to have a negative 5u minus 15. That's distributing into those equals a negative 10. Now I have a two-step equation, plus 10, plus 10. We get a negative 5u equals, not plus 10, plus 15. Because I want to get rid of the 15, not the 10 on the right. I want to get rid of that 15. So plus 15, that's 5. And then I divide by negative 5 and I find out my u value is negative 1. So I come back up here and say my u value is negative 1. Now again, I could easily check that by plugging it back into here and plug a negative 1. So again, remember, the negative 10 minus a minus 5, that's plus 5, that gives us a negative 5, and then negative 1 plus 3 would give us 2. It works. So my u value is negative 1. Let's do one more. <clears throat> Let's do the point 7, 9, and the point r, comma 1. So I'm missing an x value. And let's say we have a slope of 8 thirds. Again, I'm going to take my second x or second y value, minus off my first y value over my second x value, which is r minus off my first x value, which is 7, equals my slope, which is given to be 8 thirds. Now I'm going to reduce that top here. 1 minus 9 is negative 8 over r minus 7 equals 8 over 3. Now I'm going to do my cross multiplying. Whoops, you can't see that. I'm sorry. There we go. So I'm going to do the r minus 7 times the 8. So 8 parentheses r minus 7 equals negative 8 times 3. Negative 8 times 3. Distribute in the 8. We get 8r minus 8 times 7 is going to be 56 equals negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. Add 56 to both sides. We get 8r equals 32, divide by 8, and we find out our r value is 4. Again, we could come back up here and make sure it works by plugging it in here to this r value. And again, it doesn't matter which side I choose x2, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go 9 minus 1 is 8, and 7 minus 4 is 3, which is what my slope should be. So it does work. If you have questions, please bring them to class.